What do you think uh, is the biggest opportunity when it comes to global sustainable transition? Uh, I think it has to be energy. We still have so much of the world that doesn't have uh, energy, it doesn't have electricity. And if we can make sure that we bring clean, green electricity to those communities, that, that they, they, they can jump past coal, they don't have to uh, adopt fossil fuels as part of their transition, that mm. would be uh, an enormous benefit. Because clearly, if we can decarbonize our energy system globally, then we've kind of got halfway there to getting to net zero. Right, absolutely. And obviously, that's going to be a big, uh, big topic in the upcoming uh, COP28. Uh, uh, what are your expectations or hopes for, uh, for the meeting? What would you like to see as, um, as uh, outcomes? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that the adaptation gets uh, a much higher profile at the COP. Well, clearly, mitigation is still hugely important. It's not an either or. But I think adaptation has just not had... Um, enough visibility and of course the, the loss and damage agenda uh, is becoming um, more uh, more high profile as well but of course the uh, countries in the global north and, and many of the, the developed countries are interested in reducing emissions and all of the new technologies um, and of course many of them are not really experiencing the worst effects of climate change yet uh, so adaptation seems a little way off for them but many of the countries in the global south are uh, already seeing absolutely horrendous impacts of climate change. They need adaptation now. And we're still spending a fraction of the money on adaptation that we spend on mitigation. Right. And so, as you say, there, there is a still a significant gap in terms of the needs for funding and investing in adaptation measures versus what is actually being allocated. W why do you think that is the case? What are the drivers, the reasons behind this gap? I think some, sometimes the adaptation looks hard to invest in because um, the beneficiaries of adaptation can be, can be very widely spread. So it's not, it's not easy to see how you get a return on the investment when, you know, when actually when many of the benefits are, are, are social or, or just occur in so many different places. So I think it's really crucial that governments set um, a vision for adaptation uh, and targets for adaptation, which they back up with policies and with and with standards uh, and with you know requirements, because those are the things that that draw investment in. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, the the TCFD, the fact that we now have to have reporting on physical risk. I think most of the reports I've seen so far, many companies haven't quite got their minds around how to report on physical risk yet. But when we get that working, that kind of reporting working, um, then we will start to see more investment in adaptation to those physical risks. And so governments have the levers, uh, and it's, you know, governments need to bring in these policies and standards mm. in order to get the investment to flow. Right. And do you think as, you know, obviously we are starting to see the effects of climate change more intensively around the world. Do you think as we, as people are starting to feel the effects that the, the, the pressure on investing in um, adaptation and sort of minimizing this gap uh, will grow? Uh, will that help to funnel more funds to adaptation? Yes, I think, it, I mean, I think it's sad that we have to have fear, if you like, as, as the driver. But I think, you know, I think we are noticing the change in the UK. I think the population in the UK um, have started to, to wake up to it. We had a really quite frightening year last year. If you think we started with, with storms in uh, Storm Arwen and a sequence of further storms which gave us um, you know, the electricity system in the north of England and Scotland uh, failed, leaving a million people with no power for a week. Mm. We then had a heat wave summer with our first 40 degrees C plus temperatures, uh, leading to um, 3,000 heat-related deaths. Uh, we had problems with our transport system, problems with our um, electricity system, with blackouts. We had drought. We had mm. wildfires. Um, you know, we, we really did start to feel... Um, in a small way compared to many other countries, but we really did start to feel some of the challenges that climate change is bringing. And I think that has done some waking up. I hope that's uh, helped to wake up our government to the fact that we do need to be taking action, even in a country like the UK, uh, urgently. 
Right. And um, as you said, obviously, uh, there is an overall gap in, in financing in terms of adaptation, but uh, there seems to be a particular challenge to mobilize uh, a private, uh, private financing, private investment in these measures. Uh, what do you think is the, the, the challenge there and, um, and, and the opportunities? What, uh, what can uh, we do to, to increase and drive that private investment? Well, I absolutely agree with you. And I think, you know, that is this issue that governments need to set the vision and the, mm. and the standards and the, and the policy and the regulatory environment right. that, that means that, that companies and organizations have to take adaptation measures. Mm. But I think also there's a role for development banks, there's a role for, for government to, to, to leverage in um, additional finance to perhaps sometimes be the lender who takes the, uh, the, the first risk, if you like, to encourage others to come in. And, we, and we've, seen, we've seen the UK government actually starting to use um, uh, private finance to, uh, to fund um, adaptation in that we now have the UK's green bonds have in part been used to fund the work of the Environment Agency on, on flood risk present, prevention. So we're starting to see it happen, but we really need to see a big movement in that direction and we need to see it globally, as you say. Fantastic, thank you. And on that positive note, uh, Julia King, thank you so much for being with us. It's fascinating talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.